think what drew me to the arts um i think as a as a young kid uh i didn't really have a lot of like avenues for for making fun for myself uh we were always kind of moving around town in la and um and even spending some time out here in, in new mexico for a couple years uh so i never had the same set of friends uh so i was always having to get to know new people and so uh, i had to find like outlets for myself right so uh, a lot of the time especially when i'd be like in my dad's office or something it was a lot of uh you know drawing on his folders uh you know, I was really into, you know, monsters, animals, creating all these different things. And then I think with, with time, uh, I started wanting to channel that into uh, more, uh, I, w- I would say, themes that uh, had to do with, with my culture, right? Especially, I, I feel like I've always been very proud of, of my culture, uh, being someone of... Mexican background and I I think it, it was uh, you know my dad was always there as someone I looked to uh, you know some, someone Chicano uh, you know working and, and, and doing alright was always like I don't know like I guess a point of reference uh, as far as, as looking at other points of media I think uh, I, I really was definitely drawn to seeing the art of Diego Rivera, uh, Frida Kahlo, and Mexican painter David Alfaro Siqueiros, who's one of the, the greats, or is considered so, by a lot of people. And uh, he had painted this mural in, in Olvera Street, uh, which is uh, in, in the downtown area there in LA. And uh, I guess the, the story, just a quick story behind that mural is they had wanted him to kind of like paint something very tropical and instead of, he, 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 you know, instead of doing that, he, he ended up painting something very politically driven and so they whitewashed it. And it's not a, it's, it's, it's been restored now ever, ever so slightly. You can still, you can't make it out entirely, but it's, you can see it. You can definitely see it. Uh, and well, my dad wanted to make a musical arrangement based on that piece and so he did that and he had a he worked with a, the this, this very well-known Chicana muralist her name is uh, Judy Baca Judith Baca and uh and so we she he got to collaborate with her just on, on creating this she she created the I think the visual component because there was a visual component to this uh, arrangement and so from very early on I, I was uh, exposed to that I, I remember even speaking of Judy Baca, I, I, I remember drawing like an, an image of Cesar Chavez in her class, or not in her class, I'm sorry, in her studio. And, uh, and I, I remember she wanted it, and I was I was just like, no, no, because I, I, I wanted to hold on to it, right? It was something I had drawn, a, a it, it was a portrait of Cesar Chavez with his story written behind him. Because I remember in school, you know, you would hear, uh, you know, about Cesar Chavez and, and you know, obviously you taught about about him. My dad definitely exposed me to hearing about the Chicano movement. Um, so from very early on, I, I had exposure to the culture. And I, I definitely just started noticing it more. Growing up in L.A., obviously very uh, heavy Mexican, heavy Latino presence. And you see it, especially like in LA and even out here in Albuquerque where I'm at now, uh, you see so much, so many examples of Chicano muralism. Like that sort of stuff just started like, I don't know, like I just started getting really interested in that. And even on film. I think if I hadn't gone into visual art or even writing, I think I would have definitely have gone down the route of, of pursuing film. And so now, now that I am writing on, on different, I guess I would say manifestations of art, I've definitely wanted to, yeah, like keep looking into uh, those 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 outlets where we are being represented, uh, and wanting to expand to that. I think I definitely realized it in like my last year of uh, of undergrad because I was doing a uh, graphic design for my undergraduate work and. Uh, and, and I just started gravitating towards, uh, I would say, like, 
socio-political, uh, cultural uh, campaigns, messages, right? Especially dealing with like immigration. From a very young age, I've been exposed to uh, Zoot Suit with uh, Edward James Olmos. We talked about that in the class. Yeah. So no, I from very early on, I was very I was exposed to the the image of the Pachuco from very early on. And that always seemed like kind of like a, just a it stuck with me just as kind of a cultural image of the zoot suit, you know, the zoot suitor, uh, the pachuco, and uh, Eddie Olmos. Uh, very, very important. I, I would say, of like, you know, as, as the years have gone on, I've been exposed to more films that I feel like kind of capture Chicano experiences, and, and Eddie Olmos is in a lot of those films. I think, I think, me familia, I, I, I recently was rewatching it, and, uh, and it's, it's very... I think it's very interesting in the, in the sense that it, it shows different, like there's there's multiple kids or multiple family members uh, who go through different, they each have their own lives. They're almost on extremes, right? One becomes a lawyer, one guy's in prison, one guy gets shot by the police. And, um, and I think it makes for an interesting representation of showing like the different realities that a lot of people, yeah, on those extremes, uh, might experience growing up as as Chicanos. Um, even also just seeing those representations of like, you know, the, I think the lawyer kid, you know, he's the one to make it big. He's the family pride. And, and he kind of negates his, his Chicanidad, his, his background, right? There are whitewashed, you know, Chicanos because they feel like the need to, to acclimate to a society that, that's rejected them. Uh, historically, right? So, yeah, I, I, I've seen it. <laughs> what I'm focusing on a lot of is I'm looking at a lot of music, a lot of uh, muralism uh, events, or I, I guess specifically looking at uh, uh, examples that that are, are I would say, transcultural. Uh, that, that invite a lot of Chicanos, a lot of people from different parts of the world to, to take part in. And I, I would say symbolically break with borders. Um, and and I see it's interesting because I'm, I'm looking at those mediums, those outlets, but I was I was looking also at, at film, uh, specifically looking at the example of Sleep Dealer, which shows like this cyberpunky futuristic representation where like of the world of the of the i would say of the borderlands where you know the mexicans are, are still getting i would say just used for their labor uh i would say undervalued and so it's it's an interesting visual that i was also looking at that i would still like to to look into more and I think it makes for important discussions. I'm working with this artist and we're actually working on, um, and it's an online scene that focuses on border related matters and different uh, political subjects. It's called Borderplex. And we're actually gonna be doing something hopefully out in Mexico City soon. We had our first gallery I should say they, they really put it together. I've, I've been helping more on the graphic side. and uh, But I have also been able to submit my own work, uh, have my work displayed at this at this gallery. We had this gallery uh, showing here in, in Albuquerque. And I was featured alongside other artists that uh, feel they have experienced uh, borderlands, lives, or, or lives that, that have, that are in some way tied to to transnationalism right or, or, or the two countries.